love, really love on my mind. Ask the boss, most happy creature. Tell me what can worry be? Crazy about my baby. I'm a baby crazy about me. Mr. Cupid was a teacher. That's the reason we agree. Crazy about my baby. I'm a baby crazy about me. The boss, I get the book out. Hold it in your hand. Look out, you can understand with the A1 combination. Perfect he and she, crazy about my baby, and my baby's crazy about me.
Oh. Little medley from Mr. Fatsworth. Bloody hell, and it's gone two o'clock. Oh, it's, it's till 2.30, isn't it? It is, yeah. Yeah. We should have done three, set, three, three, three sets, shouldn't we? Well, I'll tell you what, you could go and have a rest while Nick and I do a... No, no, no. Oh. no. Oh. 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 A true martyr to his profession. Ladies and gentlemen, Keith Nichol. Right. Hey, I'll tell you what, Keith, I've just had, while I was out there having a quick cigarette, I just thought of this really great intro to something. Uh, and, uh, you know, I, I don't, would have never claimed to in developing or inventing anything. But I did honestly think this intro was pretty good. Shall I yes. demonstrate it to you? Can now, how about that? Don't you think we could work something out? Yeah, I'm sure you can fit that into something. I'm sure you can fit that Now, one, two, bark on my shoe. Put on your coat and hat. I play a game like that when I'm waiting for you. Three, four, knock at the door. I ring for heaven's sake. I can't step you take when I'm waiting for you. Five, six, my heart plays tricks. I'm addicted to your charm. Seven, eight, I got the game. Hold you in my arms. Nine, ten, kiss me again. Oh, give me a thrill. Just like I hope you will when I'm waiting on you. Yeah. 
Shaking and break it, Norman. Uh, no. Yes. <laughs> you have. Well, that's every excuse for us to do it. Right. Yes. What keys it is? I'm not telling you the key. Oh. Right. <laughs> well, you well if you're easy? not going to tell me the key, at least you'll play an intro. Yeah. Do you, Do you want it easy? Not particularly. I didn't get where I am today by not knowing when I'm beat. <laughs>
Yes, he was. His name was Theodore Friedman, so he had a tradition of that kind of music. Going. Yeah. So would you demonstrate? Uh, this is one of the fundamental scales of uh, Klezmer, but not one of the main ones, but it's the only one I can play. <laughs> uh, but that's a Hasidic scale from Eastern Europe, and that doesn't really count. The real Klezmer scale is so simple, I can't actually get into it at the moment. <laughs> but it's based on twiddly things, you see. So Ted Lewis did about three things. One of them is the flutter tonguing. He did that, and he did the twittery bit. He did that, and what else did he do? Oh, I know, he did sort of arpeggio, liquid arpeggios. He did things like that. And out of that few resources, he built his own style. And he did laughing. Laughing? All oh, right, hang on here. Yeah. And he did crying. <laughs> and he made an enormous amount of money. <laughs> Which he lost in the stock market crash of 1929. But no matter, he went on to make an even larger amount of money. How much are we getting for this gig then? Oh, <laughs> well, you've done the laughing and the crying, it's a, uh, and you've done the, the twittering and the, and the growling. Yeah. That puts you on 30 bob. <laughs> Gee, thanks, Keith. <laughs> I'll sing one. You do ten. Now everybody loves my baby, but my baby don't love nobody but me. Nobody but me. Everybody wants my baby, but my baby don't want nobody but me. That plain to see. Got a phone like Venus, on his eye and talking great. Nobody can come between us, she's a she I'm a she. Everybody loves my baby, but baby don't love nobody but me. Nobody but me. Not me for six. I'm di di devoid of uh, doing anything creative after hearing that. <laughs> Everybody 
one from day Some baby don't want nobody but me That's me to see She's got a phone like me Sunny side and token dream Nobody can come to Jesus She's the Sheila I have a sheen Everybody loves my baby But my baby don't love nobody but me One more time Really hot Nick Ward, of course. Hey, sir. Nick has just signed a contract with B&Q <laughs> for advertising their, their, their products. Right. Norman is being propositioned by a gentleman. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What? Ah. Lose my naughty. Oh, right, in the slowing. Yes, we, we're going to slow the tempo down because we have to think of Norman's pacemaker. <laughs> which is, uh, it's going at a jittery pace now. So uh, we're going to do Blues My Naughty Sweeter Gives to Me, but in, in a slow, in a slower tempo, the way Jimmy Noon used to do it. Yes. <laughs> this piano is called an Aster. But I can't think of anything less like an Aster than this piano. The notes are sticking and it won't play in my keys. It won't. It, won't. it just refuses to play in G minor. Right, take it away.
is the world's slowest drum song. In 1930, the Paul Whiteman Orchestra went all the way to California to star in their own film. It was called The King of Jazz, although I think that title should really go to George Malley. <laughs> anyway, it was, uh, unfortunately they, uh, they didn't have Bix Beiderbeck in it because he was a little bit of a naughty boy drinking wise and he, he was uh, um, invalided home, but they, they did the film and uh, it was a big, big production on this next number, written by Yellen and Ager for the film. It's called Happy Feet. Um, we're going to do it, and Norman Field will do the entire orchestration of the Paul Wyman Orchestra of 30 musicians. <laughs> he will be the sax section of six people. And, uh, and the dancing girls. And there were dreadful dancing girls. <laughs> Oh, can you no, do it? No, no, right. okay. There were dreadful dancing girls. There, there were two German girls that they, they, they got in, two flappers, and they couldn't speak English, and they sang the words phonetically, and they all sang it, all, all, as well, they sang it wrongly, as well. And Are you going to do that in your... No, I can't possibly, I can't possibly recreate that. That was... <laughs> they were very cute and had long legs. Very good. When you find that your mind will lead you far in blue, always let go. Keep your disposition. I wonder what makes me feel the way I do. If you can't be cast an eye, I'll do your reasons why. Happy feet, I'm going to get the moon on our feet and then we can dance. I've got those in the middle to dive to.
saxophones are for sale. Nothing above, <laughs> nothing above 25 quid. You can all afford them. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Norman Field. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, and um, thank you. And mixing together the whole uh, concoction, uh, the old maestro himself, ladies and gentlemen, Keith Nichol. <laughs> Don't forget the CD! Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Good afternoon to us. Another man on the Thank you. spirits uh, a year older but ever so sprightly. <laughs> have, look, look at this, Norman Field, he's, he's had his, uh, he's had his uh, Viagra and uh, washed down with a pint of old nasty and he's brought every instrument that he owns <laughs> and his keys. <laughs> Oh, what a fine figure. We and need to lighten the, lighten the plane more, you know. Yeah. What else can we throw out? <laughs> Your teeth? <laughs> well, 
<laughs> yeah. Well, 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 we'll talk about your infirmities during the afternoon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, at the drums and novelty effects at the Grand Jazz Percussion Kit, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a suit figure, this year's bow tie. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, Nicholas Ward, Spencer of this kit. And at the piano, of course, ladies and gentlemen, uh, leader, the guy who thought up the name, Andy. I'm introduced, I'll let you into a little secret. Uh, Keith, uh, I'm not sure that he approves of it, so... And I'm actually working on introducing the, the name uh, for Keith of the old maestro, you see, because this Ben Burney was um, called the old maestro back in the 20s, when he was actually quite young. So uh, if Keith had come in before we started, if you see what I mean, I would have said, ladies and gentlemen, be upstanding for the old maestro. <laughs> The trouble, trouble is that when you're given, you know, you're given names like that, you've got to live up to it. <laughs> and that's where the hard bit starts. Right, there's absolutely no plan for our <laughs> musical performance today, which means I'm going to throw Norman some horrible chins that he doesn't know. <laughs> but, uh, I can't even
careful when you're doing it. <laughs> is going to lead to. Does it lead to the gold Spain. of Spain and the gold lame jacket? Water 
down to the do. Money, I'm telling you, they don't need no band. They need time to clap for their hands. Just a happy on the cow, chewing on the cow when the duck is when the duck is when the duck is feeding on the Mississippi Mall. Did you jump on the ball? But get the law, Mississippi Mall. Uh, for me to request uh, uh, the Chevy Chase. Oh, right. Yes. <laughs> yes. Well, you could request it. What it's going to sound like is something else. <laughs> this is a tune called the Chevy Chase, written by Ubi Blake back in 1915 or something. Oh, like that, yeah. Now, Ubi the Blake, of course, was notoriously when he was 101, lived to be 101, and when asked, you know, about being 101, he said, if I'd have known I was going to live this long, I'd have looked after myself better. <laughs> So this was told on a gig and I turned to the drummer and I said, bloody hell, I said if I'd have known I was going to live to be 61, I'd have looked after myself better. But we're stuck with it anyway, so this is the Chevy Chase. It's actually a piano solo, but there's a bit of, you do a bit of clarinet. <laughs> One, two,
Have you ever heard this song? Have you ever heard of When a Lady Meets a Gentleman Down South? Have you ever heard of that? A couple of you have. That dates you. <laughs> Sophie Tucker used to do it. What do you know about Sophie Tucker? Come on, tell, Last tell the... Last of the Red Hot Mamas. Last of the Red Hot Mamas, yes. Yeah. It was, uh, the real name was Sophie something else. <laughs> and, uh, it was. Unpronounceable. Came from, came from uh, father came over from Russia or something. They came from an unlikely place. They came from like... New England, Wanstead, New yeah. Haven, Connecticut, they're not the sort of place you'd expect oh, right. somebody like to come yeah. from. But she got very famous, was very popular in England actually. And I'll tell you the one last thing before I hand back to Keith. Uh, she wrote a, way back she wrote an autobiography uh, called uh, Some of These Days, that was a big song of course. And what is amazing, you find this book in second hand bookshops, it must have sold in drillions. And it's one of the very few books where most of the copies are actually autographed by her. That you find, it's true, I, I know of four, and three of them are autographed. Ah. My one isn't. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah, lucky bastard. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's mar marvellous. I've got a picture Get of her. Bikes, yeah, she, she had a career from about 1911 when she first uh, made records to whenever she died, probably in some of the 70s. And there's a lovely publicity picture because she, uh, she was fat to begin with, but can you imagine how large she was when... Uh, and there's this lovely one of her leaning across a piano like that. Yes, yes. <laughs> and what it was, she was holding in all the double chins. You know? <laughs> and she looked marvellous, you know. But let it go. <laughs> Anyway, this is a song from the early 30s. Do you know this, Norman? <laughs> when the lady meets a gentleman down south, neath the Swanee moon to a Swanee tune they love. When a lady tells a gentleman down south, Charles, my dear fine, just to know your mind, my love. And to walk along where magnolias grow. To hard sing a song that was written long ago. And if that's not sweet romance, well, hush my mouth. When lady meets a gentleman, a very polished gentleman, lady meets a gentleman outside.
gentleman down south Need Swanee Moon to a Swanee tune they love Lady tells a gentleman down south Sure it's mighty fine just to know your mind by love All at the walk along where magnolias grow Two hearts sing a song that was written long ago And if that's not sweet romance, well, hush my bow When lady meets a gentleman, a very polished gentleman Lady meets a gentleman down south Yeah, first time in view, Yes, Norman's requested a, a, a symphonic piano piece <laughs> in order that he can go and buy me a big drink. Right. This, uh, it's a marvellous, this piano, how they uh, get names for pianos. The, to, to give it quality, it, this one's called the Aster. I shouldn't really be doing, she ha had to lose it at the Aster, but I, 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 I can't remember what, no, 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 I should do a piano piece. Would you like to hear something by Hoagie Carmichael, a, a piano piece that he wrote uh, in the 1920s, it's called the Washboard Blues. Yes. I'll have to put the, the things down. <laughs>
I'm going to think of something devilish for him to play now after shouting that out. Look at that. Oh, really? Oh, thank goodness. Yeah. Right. Norman drinks tribute, don't you? Is it, is it the local? Yes, all right. What do you want to do? Oh, right. Uh, I want to add something like a bit of a Chicago y sort of media. How about that's a plenty? Uh, well, there's something a bit slower than that. We could do that to plenty later. Yes. If that's all right. Right. okay. okay. Yeah. Do what do you want to do? I've a nice chunky version of Nobody's Sweetheart or something. Oh, yes. Yeah. Slower than any band has ever, ever played. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's no reason why. Oh, well, I need to put the mic. Des Baker. Des Baker, who's gone, says my mic needs to be a bit louder, so can I just. Yes. <laughs> Without it feeding back, of course. Without enabling me to no, talk any more than is absolutely necessary. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's not a better sort of a... Okay. We're going to do this in the style of Benny Goodman and his boys, aren't we? 1928? Well, yes, right, yes. Yes, okay. Yeah. Well, no, not, no, no, oh. no. Actually, no, not so much Benny Goodman. I, I, you see, the problem is Benny Goodman is very hard, because he was like a sort of genius. He was a virtuoso. <laughs> So we'll do it in the style of the cross between Fudd Livingston and Frank Teshmaker. No Monty Sunshine in there. <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. A, little, a little bit of Monty. Okay. Okay. A little bit of Charlie Caroli as well. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. no.
Just a few bars of each of them, please. <laughs> no, no, he can. He can. Right, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, he can. Okay, yes. Right. Uh, I'll tell you what. Uh, first of all, uh, <laughs> people's, if, if you see personnel, it says either, you know, Fudd Livingston, question mark, Pee Wee Russell, question mark, clarinet, and all these things. And I never knew who they were, so I did an extensive study of it. And in the late 20s, I, this is how to tell uh, Pee Wee Russell and Fudd apart. Not the tone, but how they play. I think this is... Something like, uh, can we have a few bars of sugar in G? Oh, really? Uh, yeah. And this, this That's difficult enough. Pee Wee, Pee Wee plays kind of, at that time, plays quite on the beat. So you go, so just eight bars. Remember, Goodman's got the dirty tone of that period. Russell is actually quite full-bodied in tone and plays on the beat. And Fudd Livingston is sort of nervous and jumpy and rushes. Sounds beat. like wines. You wait till, <laughs> wait, till, wait, till, wait till we get to the jazz workshops tomorrow. We'll. <laughs> <laughs> Big hand for Norman then. Yeah. <laughs> it's a special request. Dancing may do this and that and help you take off lots of fat. I'm no friend of dancing when it's hard. So if you are a dancing fool, you love to dance and can get cool. Do the idea that I've got. When it gets too hot for comfort and you can't get ice cream cones. Ain't no sin, take off skin, dance around the hip hop. When you're on the crowded dance floor and there's a red hot saxophone. Ain't no sin, straight up sin, and dance around your ball. The ball of bears on green up and green back, and they've got the right idea. They like to refrigerate my real way down here. Just be like the bamboo bay on the South Sea Traffic Zone. Ain't no sin, take off skin, dance around your ball.
the dirty of the dust below. Now I can do the music say. Oh, believe me when I say, dancing when it's half no friend of mine. So if you all take my advice, keep yourself as cool as I. Do the same as me and you'll feel fine. When you're calling up your sweet on a hot hot telephone. Pay no sin, pay up skin, and dance around in your bone. When you're on a crowded dance floor, and it'll spread all those hats so far. Pay no sin, pay up skin, dance around in your bone. I'm not big, yeah, but I'm about to do the whole. And I'm a devil, that's all. Them bitches, get up, I'm getting up, that's that all. If a girl with a great dress is to show everything she owns. Pay no sin, pay up skin, pay no sin, pay up skin. Talking of Chicago, we've got to do our tribute to Chicago South Side. Yeah. Quite well. Yeah. And that's the the. Uh, do you come from Chicago? Yes, sir. <laughs> she actually comes from Ch Chicago. What was it like? Because you must re must remember it from the twenty. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I've been told that there was a place called The Stroll. Yes, the uh, stroll. One, of, one of the main streets on the yeah. south side was called The Stroll. Yeah. But the most important thing about the south side during the heyday hey of jazz in the 20s was that music poured out of every door. And people could walk down the street. A bit like you. Like you, but more than you. Yeah, but all the time. Yeah. That's right, all, all, That's the, all time. the time. Yeah, yeah. the Sunset Cafe. <laughs> And you had the, the plantation and the dreamland. What's the, the, the sunset cafe? These two have been to the sunset Sun cafe, haven't yeah. well, you? Played in the sunset cafe. We have, yes, yes. And what is it now? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, one, it's a franchise. It's an Ace Hardware store. <laughs> but, but don't worry, folks, because the guys who run it, they're very used to having pilgrims come. And <laughs> uh, a, a trumpet players, for example, always buy a sink plunger. You know, so they can. <laughs> Have a plunge in, but I know. I, well, I do I, they sell washboards as well? Yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah. I would, yeah. well, I, well, I was there. I bought a screwdriver. <laughs> <laughs> Very useful. That was uh, vod vodka and orange, isn't it? <laughs> right. Okay. So take yourself back to the stroll about 1927. Or 20, August 26, yeah. And uh, yeah. it makes a big difference to Norman, you know, the, the, the month. And uh, Johnny Dodds, okay. Okay, that'll be flat. Yeah, okay, so we're going to give you, yeah, there, there'll be, who, who are you going to be on drums? Jasper Tyler, Baby Dodds. Baby Dodds. Ba baby Dodds. Jasper Tyler. Right. Yeah, okay, all right. And I shall be my usual Mrs. Mills at the club. <laughs>
minor. He got quite quite wealthy at the end, you know, Johnny Dodds, because he, he invested his money in property, you know. So he, he was a real real not he, he didn't he wasn't a millionaire, but he, he did quite well for himself, you know. Uh, and uh, unfortunately, he died young, really, didn't he? Well, relatively, because most people did death. Did they? Oh, from what? <laughs> sort of, uh, um, no antibiotics. No antibiotics. <laughs> <laughs> Victims. Now, come on, Keith, that one's a minefield. I mean, you've got under underprivileged exploitation, you know, the yeah. system. Yeah. I don't think we ought to get into that one. <laughs> Norman will be giving a lecture at 3 o'clock. <laughs> on the, the underprivileged black community in South Chicago. Right. Okay. Sorry? Yes. yes. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Some of these days, you're gonna miss me, honey. Some of these days, 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 you'll feel so lonely. You miss my hugging, you miss my kissing, you miss me honey babe, when I'm away, now I feel so lonely, for you only, cause you know honey, you had your way, when you leave me, oh you go if you come to me, miss your frosty father, all this day, mama.
I just cannot follow that. But don't think that I'm cold. I just can't we got to do it together. we got to do it together. <laughs>
people and shine. You see his name about a quarter of an hour. My loving arms are going to tend to the twine, keep you twine around you about a quarter of an hour. Now I won't be late, but that's my best day. I'm going to hurry there. I'll be waiting when the lane begins. Waiting for you to need some friends. Distinguished one of our many distinguished audience, which of course you all are. Richard is here in the front, and in his researches he found this relatively strange instrument. Um, in, in a, where was it, Richard? In an antique place. In an antique fair, yeah. Antique fair. And so we'll, we'll just get it and demonstrate it. <laughs> It's really just a penny whistle in disguise. <coughs> it's just got six holes in the normal way, and uh, it's actually in a rather forbidden key, plays in the key of D major and G major. Well, more or less. <laughs> um, so uh, that's not a very good key for jazz, but it will do a bit of G. So we thought we. It's also it's got a surprise to it. <laughs> so I thought if uh, Keith would just play a little bit of Whistling Rufus, we'd demonstrate it to you. Composers to uh, <laughs> supply pieces for it. We think the repertoire is rather limited, so watch this space. <laughs> there is uh, only three copies of the only recording that Norman ever did on this, called the Thing. <laughs> we do have. Good, what do you know about Clarence Williams? Something they called him Spoolhead or something of the he got a pointed head. Well, he had a head like a coconut. <laughs> and he had a lovely wife who uh, sang called Eva Taylor. We're going to do one of the tunes that Eva Taylor used to sing with Clarence Williams. One of their big hits. Won't you please come on home? Cause your little daddy's all alone. I'm crying in vain. Never no more to call your name. When you left, you broke your daddy's heart. They said we never part. Happy hour of every day. You can hear me say, oh baby, won't you please come home? Baby, won't you please come home?
won't you please come on home? Cause your little daddy's all alone. Money because he uh, he was not exactly straight in his dealings, you know. Uh, Bessie Smith, you've heard of Bessie, haven't you? Twenty stone of fun. Well, Bessie got hold of him behind his desk and tried to strangle him <laughs> because, because he he admittedly he discovered her, but. Uh, what happens was that she got twenty dollars for doing every record, you see, oh. which was nothing in those days. You know. So he, she, you know, I mean, she really had a go at Clarence, and I questioned Eva Taylor about that four to forty years later, and she said it never happened. Oh, right. But there you go. Well, yes, she would, wouldn't she? Yeah. Oh, I suppose she would. Suppose she would. Yeah. That's a plenty, yeah. right? Oh, right, that's a plenty. Yeah. Norman Field, super uh, clarinet extravaganza. The 85-year-old Norman <laughs> will recreate the 18-year-old Benny Goodman way back in 1928. And at the same time, simultaneously and without a safety net, Keith Nichols will be Mel Stitzel. Who's he, for God's sake? <laughs> well, who do know? Uh, no, I mean, seriously, Mel Stitzel was a piano player on this record. And he, Mel Stitzel, he wrote, he wrote a few tunes, he wrote the chant and things like that, or the chant, Maybe we'll play the that. chant if you prefer, yeah. and um, he played piano and worked in Chicago, and on drums we've got Nick will transform himself into Bob Consulman, a little known Chicago drummer, but who does sort of washes of cymbals and drums, he's, he's very good, he's quite an interesting drummer isn't he? Yeah. So Nick, so you show us what Bob Consulman plays on please. <laughs> One, two, one, two, three. <laughs>
I don't know. Which, which colour? Oh, the, oh, the blue one? Yes. The blue one. <laughs> Jelly Roll had, a, um, had an unusual style because he was based in ragtime and he had the influences of French, Spanish, I suppose a bit of Italian in there and uh, it became a, a, a totally or original style. And he also had you know, the Spanish tinge.
we'd like to welcome up a, a gentleman to join us. Uh, there are very few players in this country that can play in the big spider bit style very successfully. <laughs> we do have the, the glamorous Malcolm Walton to join us. Yes. Oh, yes. Like every other big spider bit player, he says he actually owns spider bits. Look at that one. What age is it? 1922. 1922. Uh, uh, Martin. Right. Oh my God! Yes, yes. Vicks played one like that in 1925. So, so what, what Harry James number do you want to do? You made me love you. Here's a lovely tune uh, written by Aisham Jones in the early 20s. Uh, Fix undoubtedly played it many, many times. He loved it, actually. I'll see you in my dreams. In the F.
Joshua. You know, uh, in this sort of big spider back uh, atmosphere, we're going to play Singing the Blues. Um, you remember it, the Tommy Steele hit from 1957. <laughs> I never felt, you know, no, it's the other one. Yeah. Right. Here we go. And this, this features the, the Frankie Trombar solo played by Norman Field to absolute perfection. Here we go. Your speaker. One, two, eleven.
coffee and cola with the Monday because it's washed and we're going to wash our cares away. From Monday on, the skies will look bright. Don't tell me, dear friend, no one right. I'm going to stop shouting, hey, hey, when you said love on us. Thank you.